get the Norns Choir Master. Comes in with two counters. Love that. Move the boots. Send them. Currently 16 damage coming in. Try the Acroma's Will. Both modes. Today on Commander Replay, we check out this low curve angel deck with Giada and see if we can abuse the plus one plus one counters. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Giada Font of Hope Low Curve Angels today. This game is already slightly under progress, I wasn't initially going to film it, but I started looking at this opener, and then I got real excited. So, I turned the camera on. Uh, we're in an open game of Magic Online, I've just been trying to test this build out. Oh hey, we got another angel deck. And, uh, yeah, I was just trying to get a little playtesting in, but I'm feeling pretty good about this opener, so... So I thought I would flip the camera on for it. So this is the deck that I've been working on, it's still not quite where I want it to be. Um, but yeah, as the name implies, it is a Giada deck, it is an Angel Tribal deck, uh, and the idea was to keep the curve as low as possible so that we can take advantage of that each other angel you control enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter for each angel you already control. That gives the ability to put a lot more size on creatures that are generally too small to be reliable for damage. Um, so that's what this deck is trying to take advantage of. Uh, and we'll finish reading Giada while we're at it. Two mana, two, two, with Flying Vigilance, the plus one, plus one counter ability that we just read, and tap it to make a white mana only for angel spells. So yeah, I've been kind of working on this one for the past week or so, trying to get it tuned up. Um, it's good in certain settings and less good in others. It's not great for the super high power stuff, as you could imagine. Um, anyway, brings it back to our turn. There's a Dowsing Dagger, play a land, get our commander... Yeah, I got absolutely trounced by some green and Simic decks over the weekend. Like, they were just on a million mana by, like, turn four and just generating all the value, just cycling through their decks and just like, mm, can't do a lot with that from here. So what I have noticed so far is that this deck is really dependent on making sure you have, like, some decent piece of ramp in your opener, like this Dowsing Dagger, for example. There's a rampant growth. Rampant Growth will fuel up the Tithe, so maybe this is the Tithe turn. Attracts a Grand Unifier, you say. I mean, that deck is probably going to be the threat. Let's take a read of this thing. 7 mana for a 7-7, seven, seven, Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, Life Link. Too many keywords. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library for each card type. Put one in your hand. Rest on the bottom in a random order. So much card advantage. And the worst part, like, that should be a cast trigger. That should not be an ETB trigger. That is too much advantage on too easily an abusable trigger, right? Like, that's... You put a couple, like, cloud shifts and ephemerates in there, and you'll basically draw your deck. So, yeah, not thrilled about the power level of a Traxa Grand Unifier. So that's probably where most of my focus will go here in the uh, early goings. Mountain Cycling. What card is that? A lift font. 6-4 Trample. Whenever it attacks, another target creature you control gets plus 2, plus 0, and gains Trample until end of turn Mountain Cycling. Okay. Yeah. Cute little Mountain Cycling card. Can appreciate that. Funnel's gonna swing the Champion of the Parish over to the Atraxa. Yeah, I think they've got the right idea. Could go straight to Archangel of Tithes, but... Do want to get some of this setup going. Brings it back to our turn. Esper Sentinel, even more setup. Love that. Uh, okay. So let's go Tithe. Get some planes. Play the Bonders Enclave, cast the Esper Sentinel, cast the Skull Clamp, go to combat, poke the Atraxa. They take two, and I'm gonna call that a pretty good turn. Pass right there. Uh, we have loads of card draw in Skull Clamp and Esper Sentinel. As a mono white deck, this is a very exciting amount of card draw. Don't usually have this much. Uh, we've also got some ramp in this Dowsing Dagger, which will probably be my next bet instead of just trying to like floor it. Because if we get this flipped over, that's so much mana. And then, I mean, we can easily start making, like, crazy plays. Growth Spiral into the Sentinel. They pay. Sadness. Growth Chamber. Picks up a land. What color is this? That's a Plains. Haven't even seen these. No idea what this is out of. Could be holding a Swords or a Path, which would be incredibly unfortunate if they were. That being the case, I might let off the Atraxa for a turn with the uh, Dowsing Dagger just to uh, see if I can find someone that's tapped out just to make sure it gets through. Geist of Saint Traft, yeah, there we go. Let's continue taking a look at our opponents, by the way. So in the middle, we've got Castle of the Broken Halo, one that I meant to get around to and just haven't. Um, six mana for a 5-4 with Convoke. Has Flying Vigilance Haste, love those keywords. Uh, whenever you cast another spell that has Convoke, scry to, then draw a card. That is interesting. So there's basically two things you can do with this deck. You can do the... Yeah, there's probably more than that, but... You can do Jeskai Angel Tribal, which is 
a very reasonable thing to do. Or you can do the Convoke theme deck uh, and then scry a whole bunch. Or as I'm just thinking about it, you can make like just a straight aggro deck and then use Odric number two to spread Flying Vigilance and Haste to your team. That's also a very reasonable strategy for this particular commander. And then finally, we've got... Eowyn Shield Maiden, uh, five mana for a five four with first strike at the beginning of combat on your turn. If another human entered the battlefield under your control, create a two two red human knight creature token with trample and haste. Then, if you control six or more humans, draw a card. So this is just going to be this going to be humans and tokens, I assume. Yep, see a couple of humans already. So our other two players are tapped out. So I think it might be worth just taking a little poke over in their direction, especially with the dowsing dagger. Brings it back to our turn. Stoneforge Mystic, all the goodies. Play a Plains. Play the Dowsing Dagger. I guess we'll give the tokens to the Eowyn player, which might be a terrible idea since they're a token deck, but here we are. Uh, then equip the Dowsing Dagger, go to combat. Like I said, I'm going to lay off the Atraxa here for a turn just so we can hopefully avoid a Swords or a Path if they so happen to be holding one up. If they're bluffing, it worked. Because <laughs> I really want this Dowsing Dagger flipped. Flip the Dowsing Dagger. Love that. There are situations where this is better than Sword of the Animus because it's a lot more mana more quickly. Transform, yes please. It does take... Sword of the Animus takes a few turns to really kind of build up those extra lands. Lost Veil gives, you to do it, gives it to you all at once and just allows you to get like super ahead early in the game. Uh, I'm going to go Stoneforge Mystic right here. The question is, what do we get after that? Or the question is, which equipment do we go for? We've got a few. Uh, we've ramped decently. I don't think we... Tarfin Home is just always good. Feast and Famine's insane. Bitterthorn. Greaves for the haste. Mm, Greaves for the haste might be kind of spicy. Like, mm, Feast and... I mean, Feast and Famine's always wild, but... I think I'm going to be cheeky and go for the Greaves. Uh, and then we'll put Skull Clamp on... I assume if anything's going to die... Yeah, probably be our commander if anything's going to die. And pass like that. And next turn, we start looking at Boots and Angels, and I love all that. There is definitely a school of thought where Feast and Famine is correct to go for right here. Boots will attract less attention. Feast and Famine, if not answered, would probably win us the game in about two turns or so. You know, we have two powerful lands right here. So that is a concern, but I mean, I go for Feast and Famine a lot. So I do want to try this Boots play out because... After the angel game I had the other day with Hall of the Bandit Lord, like, haste makes mono white so much better than it currently is. And it, I was having a discussion with people in Discord the other day, like, I still think mono white has a number of issues. They are slowly addressing the ramp and the card draw. It is getting better. It's still inconsistent. Like, there are times where they either blow up the thing you need and then you draw no cards or you just, like, don't draw them and life gets terrible quickly, and it's it, it's not like green, where you just have the level of redundancy that, like, you just kind of always have the things you need, for the most part. So you're, you're prone to awkward hands with Mono White, still, in my opinion. Um, but beyond that, if you're doing any sort of attacking deck with Mono White, haste is the big thing you're always missing. There are a few ways to get it. I'm not massively a fan of any of them, really. What is this? I'll finish my thought. Um... There's the Defender guy. I can't think of the name of it right now. It's an okay card, but it does require a turn to set up. And in my experience, like if you just run it down early, it's probably going to get cleaned up in a board wipe and not do what you want it to do. Now, can you get it back with a Sun Titan later to set up some crazy plays? Sure, you can definitely do that. Um, so it's not awful. I just don't like that it's, you do need a turn to set it up. So <laughs> in the same way that everything you do in white is slow and telegraphed, that is also slow and telegraphed, uh, which I'm not the most thrilled about. Opponents going to send the 4-4 four, four our way. Yeah, we'll just take that. But again, if the setup works and then you have a big turn after it, yes, it's a, it's a very solid card. Um, obviously you have the two sets of boots that are probably the best way to get haste in mono white, in my opinion. You have Hall of the Bandit Lord, which did a lot of work the other game. However, if it's in your opener, you need life gain in your deck and probably a lot of it because you will burn a ton of life with that card. Uh, in that case, it happened to be a Lyra deck who has lifelink in the command zone. So that worked out beautifully. And in that game, like I was at like 50, went down to like 19 and then bounced right back up to like, I don't know, 80 or 90 or something ridiculous like that. So there's just like, you know, at one point the life was starting to get a little bit low because I was tapping the hall of the bandit lord every turn. But keeper of the mind, choose target opponent who has at least two more cards in hand than you act to activate this ability. Draw a card. Oh, that's interesting. 
Can that go in Tap Creature Tribal? At least two more cards than you. I don't know that Tap Creature doesn't usually run out of cards that badly, though. Someone would need to have, like, a lot of cards. That is cute, though. My attention is peaked. <laughs> you ever run low on cards? Don't love what uh, Trax is doing over here, holding up one, two, three, four, five, six mana. Could be any number of nasty things. Uh, Nyx Lotus is more ramp, more setup. That's interesting. Definitely play the planes. I think this turn we go Archangel and Greaves. Nope, opponent's got feelings. Ooh, they're gonna mana drain that. Yeah, okay, don't love that. Don't love that. Um, that being the case, I did want that one. Could go Norn's Choir Master and just get that in. Was really hoping to have this one to go with it also. Or we could get the Nyx Lotus. Let's go on the Nyx Lotus play. Because the big play was kind of going to be Archangel into Norn's Choir Master. But Norn's Choir Master by itself with no other creatures to proliferate is is much less exciting. Nyx Lotus in. Poke the Attracts a player. I mean, I'm not blocking with this thing. So send that one in too. Would love to get some draws with Esper Sentinel. We don't really appear to have done that up to this moment. Mana Drain Mana. Don't love that. I assume whatever's about to happen here will probably make Atraxa in the lead and the threat. Hopefully our opponents pick up on that. One with the multiverse, what? You may look at the top card of your library, you may play lands from the top of your library. Once during each of your turns you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. Disgusting. Still holding up this, which I don't love. Also they paid for the thing. Vanquish the Horde, of course. Um, yep, no trigger on the Esper Sentinel. We will get the Skull Clamp. So the creatures will be good. And this is where the haste could be the correct call. Having to rebuild like this is genuinely pretty awful. Skull Clamp, Giada back to the command zone. Ameria is a nice pick. Oh, so is Pulse Mage Advocate. So is Pulse Mage Advocate. Oh, that's a Sorin? Gross. What's this one do? X damage to target creature and planes. Well, we have the boots, so we can get around that. Okay, so this looks like value in control. Atraxa is what I'm thinking over there. The pull, oh, man, this card is so powerful. Tomer recommended this on Twitter, I don't know, maybe two or three years ago. Ended up seeing it. And I'm like, oh man, I don't know, that seems like a real nasty drawback. For the most part, you can usually find three lands in your opponent's graveyard or three cards that just don't matter that much. And it's so powerful. Like, permanent reanimation at instant speed is so unbelievably good. I don't know, I, I've just done crazy things with this card over the years. So... One of my favorites was I was playing my Aurelia deck, and I cast Aurelia, someone countered it, and because I had Pulse Mage Advocate in play, I literally just used the Pulse Mage Advocate, Aurelia comes back in, she has haste, so it was like nothing even happened, right? And it was just a beautiful line, and then when Aurelia attacks, it untaps the Pulse Mage, so just, I'm pretty sure I won the game from that spot. Uh, opponent to give themselves a Joyful Storm Sculptor. Enters the battlefield, makes some tokens. Whenever you cast a spell that has Convoke, deals one damage to each opponent and each battle they protect. Okay. As long as it doesn't blow up our creatures, it's fine with me. Well, we can get the Stoneforge Mystic back and then, then get the Feast and Famine, which is not the worst idea I've ever heard of. Because they're going to have a lot of cards, so making them have less cards is good. Us trying to be able to keep up with their mana production is also going to be good. Uh, a Chroma's Will is a nasty magic card. Okay, so we want to get... Take three for this, five for the boots, and then it would take ten more uh, for the Feast and Famine. That is a lot. That is a lot. Uh, as we're doing that, we would get one Devotion back, two Devotion back. Three, six, seven, eight. We have nine mana naturally up to eleven. Yeah, I don't think that's all. I don't think that's going to work all in one. In one shot. So I think that being the case, we go Boots, Pulse Mage. We could get Giada back. It's not the worst idea I've ever heard of. Yeah, we could get Giada and then Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Because it's like it's not it's not incredibly threatening if we do that. Okay. Yeah, play the planes. Cast Giada. Go uh let's see, we need to do this in the right order. Use the Nyx Lotus. Put Skull Clamp on the Giada. Boots on the Giada. Go to combat. I don't love this, but uh, let's just hit the Soren. Try to keep that off, like, ultimates and things like that. I do want to just, like, keep working on their life total. But next turn, I think we can have a more explosive uh, line of plays where, where damaging their life totals will be, will be more relevant. And boots on the Pulse Mage. And then we'll wait till the end step so opponents can't really see what we're doing or until whenever it makes the most sense. Uh, I'll pass like that. So Soren down to four. Would love it if a tracks are tapped out here. Actually, is it turning? 
once during each of your turns. Okay. So they can't free cast during other people's turns. Uh, they're going to reveal and drain life. Yep. What'd they reveal? Reshape the earth. No. I think they're... Oh, they can free cast it if they want. Yep. Here it comes. Here it comes. This is sort of the problem I was talking about with Mono White is that, like, it's really hard to stop stuff like this. Particularly, I mean, we're playing Angel Tribal. If you're playing, like, hard stacks, it'd get a little bit easier. But the fact that they just drop a board wipe and all of our creatures get blued up is a real pain. You need the protection spell, and then you need to have the mana for it, which is a lot to ask. Like, in this game, we do actually have, we would have the mana for early protection, but there are many games where you will not. There are, you can't always flip the Dowsing Dagger and get a Nyx Lotus super early into a game, so. What'd we get? We got a Reliquary Tower, Field of the Dead, because of course, Overgrown Tomb, Rot Farm, Triome. There's a lot of Field of the Dead triggers. All things considered, I feel like that could be worse. They're not trying to do like a Maze's End thing. I guess it's not in the colors, but I was I was sort of expecting Volokut, but it's, it is in fact out of the colors, but, or at least something equally nasty. Field of the Dead is very good and is super annoying, and that's a lot of tokens right there, but. Um, we are flying, so reasonably manageable for us. Ooh, opponent's got a Vajuka Bog that I think they're going to pick up, which I'm not thrilled about. Netherland. At least it wasn't the Bog yet. Here comes the Atraxa. Looks like they've got one mana up. Hopefully the other two players before us can kind of draw out whatever interaction they might be holding. This is going to get disgusting. So an Apex Devastator, of course. Teferi's Protection. Oh, God. Nyx Bloom Ancient. Eternal Wanderer. Tell opponents, can we all agree that Atraxa is the threat? <laughs> they have an Ondu Inversion, so they have a board wipe in hand. We are going to need to pump out a lot of damage this turn. We have some tools to be able to do that, but a little help from our opponents would be nice. So let's let's start doing math now. So this is three. We come in with a counter. That'd be four. Uh, when it gets proliferated, that'd be five. This would be six, or we'll call it seven. And that'll still be three. So... Six plus seven, what'd I say this one was? Plus at least four. So that's 17. Yeah, with double strike, we should actually have enough to kill them on the Acromas, with the Acromas will. Do need to be careful of interaction. Castle coming in, yep. And it's gonna do one damage each opponent. I'll take any little bits of damage we can get against the Atraxa player. Oh, they do have the Atraxa. Atraxa. So Atraxa can block which means we're going to have to go early on the Acroma's will. Wicked Slumber. Tap up the two target creatures. Nice. They're going to tap the Atraxa. Uh, put stun counters on them. I like that. like that. And it's another damage. End step. We're going to get our thing back and hopefully the opponent doesn't wipe the board or do something stupid. Uh, they can have this Mountain Cycling guy and Evolving Wilds and they can have their... That one's got haste. Well, they can have their card draw guy back. We'll get the Archangel of Tithes. Tithes comes in with a plus one counter on it. Keeper of the Mine coming back. Uh, of... Of note, Archangel of Tithes really puts a lot of mana into this Nyx Lotus, so I like that. Brings it back to our turn. Hearth and Home is kind of wild, too. Okay, let's uh, let's count our mana here. So, four, five. Currently, this makes five mana, which is enough to get that. If we activated the thing, we would... Let's see, four, seven, eight, nine. Oh, we're one short of the Feast and Famine. How do we... Oh, oh, we can get one more mana off the Nyx Lotus if we get the Stone Forge first... And we can save a mana if we move the boots. Okay. Okay. So I do want to get that Feast and Famine also. The, pro mm, the problem is if we tap out with the Feast of Famine, we can't a Chrome as well. That's unfortunate. Okay, let's let's run all this again. Ooh, this has First Strike. Mm, that's probably not going to be enough, though. Let's see. So this would hit with First Strike uh, for 7, putting opponent at 19. And then we would lose First Strike damage, but we would get a second. So that'd be 7 again, plus, we'll say, 4. No, plus 6. 13 plus 3. It, yeah, it comes up a little bit short. But we get 2 from the sword. Mmm, it's really close. It's really, really close. <laughs> Alright, start with these parts. Start by playing the land. Get the Norn's Choir Master. Comes in with two counters. Love that. Move the boots. Yeah, we can't do too much else because uh, we do need to leave mana for that Acrome as well. Boots are assembled. Go to combat. Send them. Been really excited about this one. I really haven't had a chance to use it much, so this is a very exciting proliferate for me. Uh, we will proliferate. Pump up our team. Oh, nope, that one doesn't have any counters on it. See if opponent's going to respond with anything. 13. Currently 16 damage coming in. Tried the Acroma's Will. Both modes. Oh, they passed. They can still have free spells. Free spells would be bad. Acroma's Will is resolved. First strike damage. Double strike damage. Negative six. Got him. Got him. Feel good about that. Oh, yeah. 
All right. Uh, I think we just sit on our stuff. We can reanimate uh, Stoneforge at instant speed and, you know, just have some fun with that. Maybe draw a card. All seems like a solid play here. Opponent says, damn, nice one. GG, yeah. I came to play. <laughs> Not here to get blown out by some four-color Atraxa deck. <laughs> It is nice not facing Patreons, because I can be a little bit edgier in how I play. <laughs> Rekindling Phoenix. Fun card. Oh, I still need to make that Phoenix tribal deck work. Been having trouble with that one. Not that I've played it recently, but when I was playing it, oh, it takes so much to make that deck work. Pwn's going to crack back on us with a 5-4. That is totally fair. I mean, there's a choice. Do we give up our commander to draw some cards? I think we do. it would be six to get it back. Oh, we can go to the graveyard with it. Use the Pulse Mage Advocate. Hmm, that seems very good. We're going to do that. Block with our commander. We're going to stay in the graveyard. Draw two cards. Pulse Mage Advocate. So strong. So good. I don't know. What's unusual about this card also, uh, in my opinion, is that by the time that this stumbled onto my radar, you know, as in like three-ish years ago, generally speaking, most of the old gems had already been found. Like, there just wasn't, you know, there were so many people playing Commander and so many people producing content that, like, anything that really does perform well that's, like, weird and old, generally speaking, has been found. Beyond that, it is also, this is also a unique card in that nothing has really surpassed this in terms of design. Like, most creatures that exist from back in the day, there is a better version of that creature that's probably come out in the past two years, right? Like, creatures have just been outclassed through and through. There is not an effect that is straight up better than this uh, for the Pulse Mage Advocate, especially on three mana. Oh, my God. Uh, like, Amaria Shepherd does a good impression, but Amaria Shepherd generally isn't instant speed. You're going to need some fetch lands for that. Like, it's okay, but it's also seven mana, and people kind of know to shoot it. This is a weird card that, like, people don't see a lot. They don't really know how to, like, evaluate it. It all kind of happens at the end step and does amazing things. Just, I cannot say enough wonderful things about Pulse Mage Advocate. Uh, Venerated Luxodon coming into play. The one key is it's not great for, like, a small creature value deck, I mean, it'd be okay, but you do need to be... Whatever creatures you're getting back need to be worth the three cards you're giving your opponents. So, in our case, we have, like, medium-sized angels with uh, pretty good abilities that get pumped up by our commander. So, definitely worth it. By the way, we drew two cards. We drew a Vanquisher's Banner and Hall of the Bandit Lord, MVP from the last angel game. Rip the 56 life, by the way, off of the Akroma's Will. God, I love Akroma's Will. So, someone in my Discord was getting on me about Akroma's Will the other day. They're like, use something else. I'm like, there is literally nothing else this good in Mono White. If you're trying to win the game by attacking, it is the best option available. And it's not only the, it's not only the best option available, the next best option is significantly worse. Uh, so you have the Crater Hoof thing in white, which is okay, but for our sake, it is an off tribe creature, which I try to run as few as possible, and generally speaking, they're humans, the ones that I do. But it's also, what is it, eight mana? Eight mana's a lot. Like, even though we're making a ton of mana right now, that's still just a lot to lay down all at once. Uh, then you have True Conviction. True Conviction, it's been a solid card for many, many years, doesn't have the evasion, right? Acroma's Will gives you the evasion. Acroma's Will also gives you the protection and indestructible, and, right, like, it just, there is nothing else that good. <laughs> If there, were other, if there were other options that came close, I would use them. Uh, Bond of Discipline I've actually been pretty impressed with. It's not a Chroma's Will, but it's also in like a completely different budget class for like, I don't know, 50 cents or something. You can win a game with Bond of Discipline. It is sort of like the Master Warcraft of Mono White, except you also gain a ton of life, which is cool. All right, end step, time to do some stuff. Let us get... Uh, we can give opponents some more stuff back... Yeah, let's get our commander back just to make sure we have access to it so things don't go wrong. Ooh, and it ETBs and we proliferate. Yeah. Oh, the synergy. So good. Proliferate. Uh, then we shall draw the Bonders Enclave. I'd like to see a couple more angels here. We've only played three. There are three good ones, and they work well with the deck, but would love to see more. Lotus Field? Meh. Not quite what I was after. Ancient Tomb? Meh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Let's. Uh, we need to. We do need to refocus ourselves a little bit, just because we did burn our big play. Our big play was at a Chrome as well. Uh, that's nine damage plus six. They'll proliferate, so that'd be ten plus seven. 
be 17. That's a pretty sizable poke. Now, opponent does have some mounting threats over there, and we do not have a lot of vigilance to our name. Hmm. I think we're going to start with, yeah, let's go with Ancient Tomb and just draw another card, because I did not really find what I was looking for. Ah, landscape. Gross. Okay. Uh, next step, then, is Pulse Mage, giving opponents more stuff back. I mean, so here's the problem. If... If we use this last... Mm, I don't want to use the last Pulse Mage trigger. I do want to have one available, just in case. This is an Anthem, though. Anthems are more damage. I like that. This does fun things. Gets This gets our Ameria count up. Okay, yeah, get the Hearth and Home. Maybe we didn't need to play the Ancient Tomb. This thing's making a ton of mana. <laughs> this is why you run it. Uh, it's not for the early game. It is for the late game when you can get 5 to 10 additional mana off of it. Oh, you want to know what we can do? We can blink the Archangel of Tithes so that... Uh, it's untapped. It'll probably lose some counters in that process, but having it untapped is actually really good. Uh, Vigilance is really, really good with Archangel of Tithes, and like almost necessary to make it its strongest self. Um, we haven't found the Vigilance yet. There are a couple creatures in the deck that do grant it, but have not drawn into them. Equip the Sword, equip the Skull Clamp. There is a world in which this is a really good blocker also, because it has First Strike, but let's get the Vanquisher's Banner. Uh-oh, opponent's got feelings. Counter target non creature spell. Woof. Vanquisher's banner down. Oh, we do get two treasures. I'd rather have the Vanquisher's banner. <laughs> We're being completely honest. Ah, uh, go to combat. Uh, yeah, we'll swing into the Castla. Is it Castla? What is it? Yeah, Castla opponent. Um, yeah, that seems good. Proliferate. Uh oh, opponent's got feelings. Opponent is going to do three damage to our commander. Uh, exile it. Oh, no, yeah, okay. Uh, well, at least we'll draw some cards. <laughs> we do need to draw more cards. This is also why I wanted to leave up a Pulse Mage trigger. Down it goes. Uh, so we'll... Do we want Command Zone or we just want to blink it back? We've got a ton of mana. Well, we lost the thing that we lost the cast trigger. I was thinking about that cast trigger, but that's gone now. Uh, I'm going to be careful and go back to the Command Zone. Getting the Esper Sentinel back at some point might not be terrible just because... Hit a dead spot with the lands here. Oh, we're going to have no blockers. Oh, that's a thing. Two more lands. you got to be kidding me. Come on. Come on. Uh, proliferate. Opponent has denied our value pretty hard. Land flood. Gross. Is that five straight draws of lands? Uh, so the next thing is probably sword on the pulse mage because we don't have a lot of blockers. Opponent goes down to 12, so they take a pretty sizable hit, but uh, I do think we are the arch enemy at this point. Skull Clamp on the Pulse Mage, and we've played a land. Yep, God, I would love a Walking Atlas right now. Cough all these lands out. Lotus Field isn't great for our current situation. So we're trying to get the planes count up for this thing. Don't really want to be sacrificing. All right, let's see what opponent's got. They do have two pretty good flyers. We're at 54, so I'm not exactly... I don't think one player will kill us, but both of them, if they both come up with big plays, could. Would like to draw more angels. That was one of my gripes about Mono White also, is that, like, because of how you have to generate value, namely equipment, most of the time, it does mean that, like, you do run to these, like, dead spots of, like, I would just like to draw the creature types of the deck that I'm playing. Please. <laughs> I, this is an angel deck. I would like to have more angels. Lately, it's been looking like the equipment deck with angel support. Oh, uh, what's this thing? Prosperous Partnership. Enters battlefield, make two green and white citizen creature tokens. Tap three untapped creatures you control, create a treasure. Meh, yeah, seems solid. Good for a token deck. Oh, man. What? Tap three untapped creatures you control, create a treasure. Huh. All right. Use cases for this. Obviously token decks, number one. So I'm thinking Aurelia, the law above. But I'm also thinking if you have OG Aurelia... And you have Team Vigilance, which is not that difficult to do. Uh, you can attack. During the attack phase, tap three creatures with Aurelia's trigger on the stack. Make three tokens, and then, then make the treasures. Then your stuff will untap to the trigger. Um, that's spicy. Gonna need to play with this at some point. You do want to be set up for it. I probably wouldn't just, like, jam it in there randomly. It is something you want to be, like, well-equipped for. So a low creature count deck, probably not going to get it done for you. And you're going to want the Champion of the Parish to come back. You're going to want probably the two Vigilance Angels, uh, and maybe even this Felidar Retreat. So 
If you got a Felder Retreat in the deck, Thraven Watcher, fantastic. Basically always watching on a creature. Love that. And also, of course, where did it go? I can't find it. It's the other four mana one. Is it not in here? Maybe it's not in there. Uh, the, the, the Lieutenant one. What's it called? I always forget the name of it. Opponent is going to get their creature back. Yep. Wow, opponent didn't attack. So they're just trying to hold back the blockers. Love that. Got him scared. Pumps up the champion of the parish with the Heart Flame Duelist. And, oh, these all knights? Human, human knight tribal? Yeah. So knight exemplar making them all indestructible. It's a thing to be concerned about. Uh, we, we should have Mask of Memory in the deck, do we not? Yeah, this is Mask of Memory. We might be on, we might be on Stoneforge Mystic for the Mask of Memory because we have a flooded. So I think that's what we're doing. What are we giving back to opponents? Start with the land. Uh, card draws fine. Geist of St. Traff, sure. Uh, we'll get the Stoneforge Mystic back. Pulse Mage Advocate MVP this game. Oh my god. Stoneforge. Use the ability. Get a Mask of Memory. We've got the Hearth and Home Stoneforge Mystic combo also, by the way. Notably, they have two big flying blockers. We don't really have a way around that. Karmic Guide is not quite where I wanted to be. Oh, don't you have something dumb. Okay, they're just going to draw a card. Love that. I was like, oh, please don't be Sleep or Curse of Exhaustion or one of those like terrible blue cards that time walks you. They can draw a card. That's fine. Uh, Karmic Eye was also not what I was looking for. So let's get the Hall of the Bandit Lord in. I do want to get that in at some point here. Is there Commander at six? Six. Yep. I think that six is worth it, though. I think that is going to be a worthwhile six. We'll just use the Nyx Lotus. It's making seven mana. Uh, the White Sword means that only the Phoenix can block. That can't block. We proliferate. Oh, that's so good. Wow. Norn's Choir Master with Giada. Just insane. Keep proliferating. Would love another creature. This one, that one's more of a timing play. Since we can't just, like, sneak through. And I have been thinking that a, uh, believe it or not, uh, what's it called? Um, Great Sword of Tear would be really good for this deck. Uh, because you do run into flying blocking occasionally, and it does cause problems sometimes. And that would be fantastic right here. Yeah, let's move the Sword of... Oh, it's got boots on it, right? Okay. Um... We'll just put it on the Giada then. Next is Mask of Memory. All oh, right, we do need to put that right there. Whoops. That's the one that's supposed to be doing the damage. Yeah, put... All right, now we move the boots. Move the boots. Uh, mask there. Move the sword. Uh, move the boots back over here. Woo! That is large. Send this in right there. Send it to the other player this time because they don't have a blocker as long as the... Hearth and Homesticks. There's, uh, there's a lot of value riding on this hit, so... Nope, opponent's got feelings. Harsh Justice. Whenever an attacking creature deals combat damage to you, it deals that much to its controller. Well... <laughs> well... Ooh, and it's got lifelink? Okay. Nice play. So I think they gain life and we lose a bunch of life? I hope it doesn't prevent the equipment triggers. Okay. We still get the, uh, we still get the triggers here. Love that. Uh, blink the Stoneforge Mystic... Mask of Memory, and we're going to lose a bunch of life. Oh, my God. 13. Yeah, going to feel that. Going to feel that. Mask of Memory. Use the ability. Eerie Interlude. Protects us from a board wipe. It's not the worst thing ever. Uh, give it a Lotus Feel. That just doesn't seem great right now. Oh, op the opponent still goes down to 11. Yeah, get the planes. Uh, Stone Forge. Use the ability. Feast and Famine. Put it off long enough. I think we just sit on our effects. Where do we need to put things? So, Stoneforge is probably most likely to block. Who needs the boots? Um, I think we need to protect the Archangel of Tithes, because that's the one that probably prevents us from dying. In this moment. Uh, pass like that. We'll probably try to draw a card somewhere. Yeah, we've really kind of, uh, flooded here late in this game, just not finding what we need. A double strike on that Mask of Memory would have been amazing. Halo Fountain is a magic card. Love that card. Super cool. Opponents have not ramped the way that we have ramped. It is turn nine, and we are on 11 lands, and two of those are multi-producing lands. Plus a ton of mana from Nyx Lotus. Opponent's gonna ping us, yep. So they convoke, draw two cards, and they can scry two, then draw a card. So they're getting some extra cards here. They don't have a ton of mana left for a board wipe, although the board wipe doesn't really help them in this moment. Because, I mean, they don't know it, but we have this. Spot removal could pick us apart a little bit if they know what they're doing. Getting rid of Pulse Mage Advocate would shut down nonsense... Yeah, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky. Multiple, you'd probably need multiple pieces of it to really uh, kind of pick us apart here. Draw two cards. Yep. They're just digging for answers. 
This would be a really good Felidar retreat game. <laughs> I have so many lands. Tormenting Voice. More card draw. Uh, notably, Eerie Interlude would reset the counters on these things, so they would get much smaller. But in theory, the team should still survive, and that's good enough. Evolving Wilds. We've been through one third of the deck, and we've drawn two angels out of the 99. It's disappointing. I guess three. There's one in our hand. Still, we've drawn a pretty good amount of cards, and we have a flooded. We can draw another card. Oh, there's a Cleansing Nova. Okay, yeah. Well, it's your interlude time then. Oh, we can't get the Choir Master. It's uh, gonna get blued up. What we can do though is get the Esper Sentinel. What are we giving back to opponents here? Tormenting Voice, totally fine. Geist of Saint Traft, more card draw. That's fine. Get back the Esper Sentinel. I don't know if we have enough of this. Three. I th Ooh, I think we do. Draw a card. Herald of War, an angel finally showing up, and one that cares about plus one, plus one counters a lot. Uh, then blink our team. Oh, those two have Shroud. Ooh, we're going to lose those two. Ah, still, I think we'll be all right. Yeah, a little awkward with the protection in the Shroud, but still, keeping we'll, we'll be able to keep the value portion of the team. Command Zone, no. Oh, they've got Indestructible, so we're going to take a little attack right here. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, no, because Wait, what? The Exemplar should have kept a lot of the team alive. Like, the Exemplar should have died, but all the other knights... Was there only one other knight? Oh, these are the only other knights. Okay. The rest of them weren't knights. Duh. Confused myself. <laughs> Overthought the situation. Ant Pont's coming in. Yep. I actually don't mind that they slowed us down, because I just want to look at a little more of the deck. I'd like to see a few more angels. There's a few I haven't playtested, and I have not seen them this game. Unfortunately, opponents are on low life, so if we have, like, literally anything with haste, uh, it's, you know, going to be pretty deadly to them, but... Oh, we do have this Karmic Guide also. Yeah, okay. Karmic Guide seems good right here. Oh, and we have the uh, Hall of the... Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, we've just... We've done... We've done good this game. <laughs> we've done real good this game. Uh, opponent's going to Island Cycle. Team comes back. Uh, use the ability. we got to be running low on equipment now, yeah. Uh, we'll get better Thorn, I guess. A Sword of Vengeance wouldn't be terrible, but, like... It'd only be good in this situation where you have tons of mana. Late in the game, board wipe goes off and you need to rebuild. That's when you want it. Nykthos. Uh, whew, that's even more mana. Okay. Play Nykthos. That is even more mana. Play a Karmic Guide. Actually, no. Play a Herald of War. Uh, activate the Pulse Mage with that on the stack, I guess. The Phoenix. Uh, maybe not the Phoenix. You know, that thing, that thing, and this thing. Uh, let us get the Choir Master. That resolves, uh, what do we need? Yeah, just tap this thing for a bunch of mana. That's eight white mana, love that. I don't even think we need that much, no, whatever. Play the Karmic Guide. Uh, the Herald of War does come in with two counters, so that's cost reduction of two on our humans and angels. Love that. God, imagine if this was legendary. This would be such a good legend. Oh my god. This would have been if this would have been the mono white commander that we needed like ten years ago, right? Uh, back when mono white commanders were pretty rough. You get back the uh, archangel of tithes. Uh, oops, I should have put haste on the karmic guide, which I did not do. Um, draw a card. Come on, angel. Come on, Segovian angel. That's the one I really want to like use, and I haven't seen yet. Although at this point, like it's sort of you know, any angel we draw is probably good here, because we have just tons and tons of mana. Pearl medallion is not that. Uh, okay. Skull Clamp there. Uh, we can get a sword on there, too. Sword. Boots. Oh, uh, if we went Feast and Famine, this would probably actually be lethal. Whatever. We can give opponents one more turn. We've been much stronger than they are. Send that one. That's eight. Send that one. That's two. It's ten. Yeah, if we send both of these, this will take them down. Okay. There's... Oh, yep, Herald of War. I forgot about that one. Herald of War and Proliferate. Love that. Love that. Yep, start the proliferating. Man, one turn earlier on that Cleansing Nova, and it actually sets us back quite a ways. Like, they buy themselves a pretty good amount of time to get back into the game. Let's go Hearth and Home on the bottom. Uh, blinking the Karmic Guide, because if we find something cool, we can just blink and reanimate it with the Mask of Memory. Oh, the synergy. Draw the Mask. Uh, ooh, it's a Lyra. Yep, yeah, okay, we'll do it just for cutesies. Hopefully the board wipe doesn't happen, because that would be terrible. Get a Plains. I guess we have a Maria up. Karma Guide, come back! <laughs> yeah, we're on seven planes now, so okay. Opponent would have many hoops to jump through to try and stop us. I feel okay about what we're doing. Pass like that. Oh, we need to discard. Get rid of land. No, we could probably discard the Myriad Landscape because we're pretty low on basics at this point. Also. Do they have another board wipe? Because we actually don't have that much if they do. Other than the Ameria, which is very good. 
They do. Uh, planar outburst, and it's a nasty one. Oh, my. Uh, and that's why I've been holding all this stuff back <laughs> in case of something like this. Ooh, we're going to lose all our card draw. Don't love that. Yep. Guess that's going to happen. Yeah, at least we draw with the skull clamp. Love that. Love that. They get a land creature. Show me some angels. Youthful Valkyrie. Uh, potentially. Well, you know what? We're going to get a look at Youthful Valkyrie with, like, not a lot else in play. Uh, here comes the island. Yep. Who do we get back? Ly Ooh, Karmic Guide. Mm, do we need Karmic Guide back? Basically just gives us a body. Yeah, get Karmic Guide. Use ability. Karmic Guide getting Lyra, I think. Trouble in pairs? I feel like that's supposed to show up early in the game. Um, play a planes. Cast our commander. Oh, that's a lot of mana. Uh, use the Hall of the Bandit Lord. I'm waiting to get some action with that. Oh, forgot the cost reduction first. We should probably do that. Get the cost reduction first like a professional. Then cast our commander. Uh, then cast the youthful Valkyrie. Let's draw with the Bonders Enclave. Uh, land doesn't do it. Ooh, that's a 5-7. Maybe we should draw that out in the opposite order. No, I think that, I don't know, whatever. We did it in the order we did it in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think with a sword equip, let's go on Lyra. Oh, that one doesn't blow up the artifacts. I thought that was one of the ones that blew up the artifacts. It did not. Uh, mask. Now we need to pay one. Boots. And send them. This one has been solid. Like, it doesn't... It seems like it could be underwhelming, but I've actually been fairly impressed with what it does for two mana. Because, yeah, it does get up to this 5-7 range very quickly with this deck. Wait, did they just survive? Oh, first strike damage, right. Okay. Uh, Blink the Karmic Guide. It's not OP at all. Draw two. Uh, discard this land, finally. Land. Horn of the Mark would have been good this game, too, because, uh... Youthful Valkyrie. Oh, my God. She keeps going. The value. The value. Youthful Valkyrie getting bigger. Love it. Yeah, this would have been good early in the game when we were, like, dead spotting and couldn't find creatures. Uh, yeah. So, with this game in particular, mostly I'm just happy we took down that Attracts a player, because that deck was super annoying. Um, the other two opponents were definitely doing stuff just less powerful than what we're doing. Uh, so those, those decks were definitely just more casual. They did not ramp really much at all, I don't think. So, um, they did draw some cards here and there. Uh, a couple board wipes slowed us down, but it's an angel deck, so it is resilient to board wipes. But yeah, super happy we took down the attracts because that attracts. I think on that, I mean, they had eleven cards, right? Like whatever they were gonna do in the next turn, either ends the game outright or just like they put a death grip on the game that like no one can do anything the rest of the time. So uh, glad we dealt with that. Uh, Norn's Choir Master did so much damage, so good for this deck. Oh my god. Tithes was solid. We didn't really get attacked a lot. I don't know that opponents were in a position to attack us all that much. I still do want to see the Segovian Angel. I don't know if this card is worth the slot or not. I'm still trying to figure that out. Uh, that is a work in progress. Really have no idea what to cut here for this last thing. You want to get that land count back up by one. You know, I'm not sold on the Vanquisher's Banner. There are times where it could work. You have to ramp like crazy for this to work. I, I, I'm not completely sold on this card. It could be all right, though. Uh, anthems tend to be better than you expect with this commander because your commander is already putting some amount of size uh, on the creatures. Getting an additional plus one, plus one here or there is more impactful than normally I give it credit for because normally eh, plus one, plus one doesn't get me that excited. It's OK sometimes, but normally you need to get to about plus two, plus two to really kind of feel it. But with this deck, because you're already putting size on stuff, it, it, do it just amplifies everything even more. And if you can find Double Strike, I would love to get a True Conviction in here. There's that new Angel, too. There's a five-mana Angel that gives Double Strike. Um, I forget what it's called, but I got I to gotta find that one and probably get that in here, too. So, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below.